All right, priority number one to making delicious mashed potatoes is make sure you peel them till they're super clean, super clean. Priority number two, try and cut them to where they're all around the same shape or size. They're all different. You're not gonna get two potatoes that are identical. So as I'm cutting them, I'm trying to get them all within relatively the same size and shape. And then priority number three, cold water. You always start with cold water. When dealing with root vegetables, they're pretty hard, right? They grow in the dirt, they need to be firm. So if you were to start with hot water, it's gonna cook the outside first. So by the time the inside or the center of a root vegetable is cooked, the outside is gonna be overcooked and it's gonna be waterlogged. And so that's gonna give you a very inconsistent mashed potato. Those are those like gritty mashed potatoes. You know, it has that grit texture, the little kernels of potato in the center, and it's just gonna be inconsistent. So cold water, similar size and shape, and peel them till they're super clean. Priority number four is when you do put it on the heat, start out kind of like medium high to high heat because we want the water to start coming up to a simmer. But once the water comes up to a simmer, we're gonna leave it at that. You don't want the water to be boiling or rolling boil because we don't want the potatoes to be agitated in the water. We don't want the water to be like moving them around and, and causing friction because then it's gonna have that same effect as if you were to use hot water where it's gonna start creating, again, that friction and then the outer part of the potatoes will just start dissolving around each other. We want these to just be chilling in very hot water, simmer, and cooking at a very nice low pace. It, it does take a little bit longer, but as always, you know, food that you take time and effort into and genuine care is always gonna be more delicious. All right, so this is where we want to live. This is a perfect combination of simmer, not too hot, not too cold. Now look, this, this is not what we want. This is heavy boil. You see how the bubbles are moving the potatoes around. They're breaking the potatoes down too fast. So we don't want that. We wanna find that perfect temperature where it's just like a little couple bubbles here and there and it's, it's slowly cooking the potatoes. And at this point, I'm essentially just gonna check it every like two to three minutes. Uh, depends, depends. So like, I'll check now. They're still pretty firm. So I'll probably set like a five minute timer and I'll come back in five minutes. Five minutes later. All right, so let's take a look at our potatoes now. As you can see, they're extremely soft. It gives no give when I put the knife into the potato. So we'll shut off the heat and we're gonna strain out our potatoes. So now while the potatoes are straining and drying out, I'll reheat the pot, medium heat, and I'm gonna put the butter inside of it. Now it's not gonna take very long for the butter to melt, but I always like to start with the butter before I add my cream, because if you're familiar with cream, the moment it starts simmering or boiling too much, it'll want to boil over. And so I always start with my butter and I get it to a point where it's about 90 to 95% melted before I add my cream. And all we're looking for is we just want the butter and the cream mixture to be just as hot, if not a little bit hotter than the potatoes. We don't want the potatoes to cool down as we add the cream and the butter because then that's when you get those textures of like gritty or pieces of potato that don't break down all the way. All right, so you can see that almost all the butter's melted. So now I'll add my cream. Now the secret to really delicious mashed potatoes is just a lot of butter. <laughs> Pretty much do two to one times butter to cream. I don't really do a lot of cream. And I'm gonna raise up the heat on this to get it nice and scalding. I want this mixture to be pretty hot. So you can see it starting to simmer on the edges. We'll just go a little bit longer. Scrape the bottom, make sure it's not scalding at the bottom or the sides. So this is a good amount right there. So we'll shut off the heat. Now I'm gonna place my potatoes into a pan. And this is where if you had like a, a potato press or a food mill, it would come in very handy. Unfortunately for us, all I own is a masher. And where I come from, we call this a bean masher. You wanna break down all the potatoes as much as possible. And I go over it about two to three times. So I'll make sure all the potatoes are mashed right now. There's none of the larger chunks that I cut. And then once I get all that done, then I'll come through and I'll mash it a second time. And you're just looking to break down the potatoes. So that way, once we add our cream and our butter mixture, it'll just be nice and velvety smooth.
And I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but I can see like little bits of potato that haven't been mashed down yet. So I'll come through and I'll mash those sides again. I'm gonna turn on the heat to low and then I'm gonna add in my butter and cream. Don't let any of it go to waste. If I did own a potato masher or a food mill, I wouldn't go back on the heat. I would just go in a, in a bowl because it'll break it down the potatoes enough to where they'll be nice and silky smooth without having to reintroduce it to the heat on the stove. And I just try to fold the cream into the potatoes in the center and then essentially just like fold it onto itself over and over and over until the cream and the butter incorporate themselves into the potatoes. I never use a whisk when doing this part of the potatoes because that's how you get gummy mashed potatoes. You don't want to overwork the potatoes. Now we're going kosher salt and fresh black pepper. If I had white pepper, I would totally do that right now just to keep the clean look of it, I guess. If you don't have a spatula, a wooden spoon will work fine as well. And this is just a really nice base mashed potato recipe that you can use. You can add truffle oil, make them truffle mash, you know, sour cream, some chives, make sour cream and onion mashed potatoes. You can just use these and then top it with some cheddar cheese, green onions, and some bacon bits and make it like a, a loaded mashed potato. Or you can just keep them super clean like as is and enjoy the fruits of your labor. Man, these are good. I hate it that I love mashed potatoes so much. And mashed potatoes. There you have it, folks. I really do hope you enjoy these as much as I do. Mmm.